Oh, hey guys, what's going on? Uh, as you can see, I did a little bit of remodeling. Yes, I realized that all I really need to achieve enlightenment in this world is to have a bed and four walls and a roof and uh, apparently a portrait of a gun-slinging vampire. Mostly because it is a massive pain in the ass to take that thing down and put it back up again. But anyway, welcome to student number 11 discussion, Meizo Shoji. Alright, so, first thing, after doing some research into this, you know, the character and reading what people have to say about the character, I am surprised, really genuinely surprised, that Horikoshi has not focused more on Shoji. Because Shoji is kind of a badass. Scratch that. Shoji is a badass, alright? Just look at him. Just look at his appearance, first off. Not even going into his quirk yet or what his personality is like. He's a pretty intimidating, but rather unique-looking character. Uh, he's the tallest out of all of the students of Class 1A. Um, he's also, by by the way, fun fact, the youngest as well, so interesting there. Um, just by looking at his uh, design, you can tell he's definitely a heteromorphic type in terms of quirks. Uh, his quirk involves uh, duplicating his limbs and various body parts, but just his like actual appearance is rather intimidating. The large stature, um, the fact that he has like a right-angled hair, you know, kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist. Uh, he always wears a face mask, so you can never see anything below his eyes. And the fact that he has six very large arms. Uh, however, his arms arms are not really normal arms, even without getting his quirk involved, okay? Because all six of his arms are connected with this, like, skin webbing, and also they don't end in hands, like normal hands. They have these little pods there that can extend outward and create various body parts, like his eyes, or his ears, or his hands, or even his head. Uh, Horikoshi did some uh, sketches of Shoji, you can see here, and we actually can see what his uh, face looks like underneath his mask. He does, in fact, have a mouth. I was kind of curious about that for a while. Like, does he actually have a mouth? Um, because he usually t tends to speak when uh, using his quirk, you know? He doesn't usually speak using his actual mouth, but apparently, according to this, he does have one. It also shows off that he can uh, duplicate even his head if he really wanted to, so yeah. Um, his quirk is Dupla Arms, which I think is one of the more creative uh, quirks in My Hero Academia. What it does is, those little pods on the end of his, uh, you know, arms where his hands should be, he can uh, produce any body part that he wants. So, an eyeball could pop out of the pod, or an ear, or an arm, or if he wanted to, he could even create another pod. So one pod on his arm, he can stretch that out, create another pod, and that pod could create more arms or more eyes if he wants to. Now, you might be thinking, what's exactly the uh, benefit here? And uh, many of you also that are One Piece fans might be drawing parallels to Nico Robin here. This isn't a One Piece discussion, but I'm assuming if you're watching me, because One Piece is the main focus of my channel, you probably are at least aware of Nico Robin or her devil fruit or the fact that she has very large jubbly jubblies. It doesn't matter which one of those you're familiar with, just bear with me on this. Um, so, Nico Robin's fruit is useful because she can spring up her arms or her legs, usually, usually her arms, but she can create eyes or legs as well, anywhere she sees. So, if she's looking at a wall like that's 20 feet away from her, she can use her devil fruit ability and the arms can pop out of that wall. Shoji is similar, but he can't create his arms wherever he wants. They have to be tethered to his body, okay? Um, and so it might seem like a little bit less effective, and, and it is, I mean, if you're just going to compare it directly to Robin's ability, um, but it's still extremely useful in terms of, like, a combat or reconnaissance situation, because figure this out, okay, yeah, Shoji might already have two eyes, but imagine you can create an eye on your hand. The benefit of that is that you can literally see wherever, you know, you don't, you're not limited by your head, and, you know, like, you have to turn your head all the way around, because you can't, I can't actually see all the way behind me unless I do, like, this or something. I do some yoga crap. But imagine being able just to create an eye on the, you know, on your palm. And then you could just be, like... I could see anything. With an ear, it's a similar thing, where he could create an ear, and then he could, you know, choose to hear in any specific direction, or put an ear to a wall and hear what's going on on the other side. Um, if it's the same way as in a sketch, and he really can create, like, a duplicate of his head or something, I'm not sure why he would have to, you know, he would need to create an entire head unless he was trying to scare somebody, which, you think about it, that, okay, yeah, if you're just walking down a hallway, and then all of a sudden, you know, out of the floor, Shoji's head just pops out, you'd be like, oh! 
what the is it would scare you. I guess he could also use it to bite somebody if his mouth really does look like that. It's like a jagged kind of thing. It has a lot of maybe, um, you know, like a Glasgow smile thing going on there. But yeah, maybe he could do something like that. But I think there's really no practical reason for him to spawn an entire head. So he just keeps it to ears and mouths and eyes, you know, to communicate and do various other things. He could also spawn a nose as well, I assume. He just, he just never really used it because once again, I'm sure that's rather selective. He's like, I... I need to smell the origin of a certain odor. Let me create a nose on my Dupla arms. Um, so like I said, though, he can also create the replication pods again and again and again. So if he really wanted to, Shoji could kind of create like a super long extendy arm where he could sound out a pod, create another pod, create another pod, create another pod, and on that pod, he creates another hand. The problem is more of these he creates, the less control he has over it, or it becomes like a, I guess, if he wanted to create hand after hand after hand, each hand he created would have less and less, like, grip strength. And Shoji is a freaking beast when it comes to weightlifting and grip strength. One of the tests at the beginning of the series, um, the quirk apprehension test, uh, this is actually one of the, you know, one of the students that Deku was kind of jealous of at the beginning because Izuku, he was looking around like, oh man, everybody has awesome quirks and they're gonna do really good on this test and I don't, I, I'm not really used to using my quirk yet. And then he looks over at Shoji and there was a test to determine in like grip strength and he picks up this thing with all three because he has like three arms on both sides of his body so he uses all three of his arms to grip this thing and just Ugh, it's like it's like the pressure of like half a ton or something. It was ridiculous, and he weightlifts constantly. And I think that's to booster his um his proficiency with his quirk. Because you imagine like if one of his hands can like uh, exert that amount of pressure, he creates another one. Even half that amount of pressure would still be devastating. Even a quarter would be still pretty good. An eighth, all right. A sixteenth, a thirty second, a sixty fourth. You know what I'm saying? Like let's say it gets halved each and every time. But if you're combine grip strength on one set of arms, which is all three, is like half a ton. Well, obviously, each arm wouldn't be, you know, half a ton of pressure. It would be like one third of that, but still, that would be very impressive, right? Also, because his arms are all connected with that skin-like webbing, it's kind of, uh, to look at that, but uh, he can also glide a short distance using it, because he could basically just, like, jump off a building and then stretch out all of his arms like he's a freaking bat or something, and he just kind of can't fly with it, but he can glide, you know, from building to building, so it's extremely useful in that kind of situation as well. Um, that skin that's in between his uh, arms, I'm sure it's a weak point compared to his actual arms, but it's not like super, super frail, like it would rip really easily, you know? I mean, if someone like punched it or, you know, tried to cut it or something, I'm sure it would rip easier compared to his his arms or something, but um, in terms of like, you know, durability, they're, they're good enough for him to actually, you know, carry his body weight and glide and stuff. Now, beyond that, he's also extremely cooperative when it comes to the group at hand here. Uh, his physical appearance appearance does look rather intimidating when you see this guy, giant octopus kid, although not ne necessarily because an octopus would have eight arms, but you know what I'm saying, like this huge kid that's like wearing like a ninja mask and has like Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist hair, has like right angles and, and, and like six arms and he's all super buff and shit, you'd be like, uh, hi there, large man, <laughs> How are you? I'm just gonna walk around you here. But no, Shoji's a pretty cool guy. And he's like, oh, you need some help with something? I'll help you lift this. Come over here. You know, I'll, I'll do this for you. So that's the cool thing about Shoji. Um, in terms of his actual personality, we really don't know much about it beyond that point that he's just really a, like a really helpful guy. Um during the training camp arc. I think that was the moment in the uh, story where he's really had the most spotlight. Uh, Izuku was running around the forest trying to find all of his friends and, and Kachan, and at this point, Izuku's arms are all banged up and he can barely run, really. He's just using full cal and running on adrenaline. Um, that's when Dark Shadow comes out of the forest and attacks him. Shoji grabs him, and that's one also cool thing about him is that he can, uh, you know, lend support because, you know, he's literally got six arms to work with here, and then more if he deems necessary. So so he basically carries Izuku on his back for the latter half of the arc there, because uh, Izuku really doesn't have the energy to move at that point. Um, and he does that also during the sports fest. He carries, like, uh, Mineta and Suyu on his back and covers them with his arms so he, they can, you know, uh, try to attack the enemies and, you know, s uh, grab their headband with also being protected. So that was a pretty cool, uh, you know, application of their quirk. Not even, that's not even really getting the Dupla arms thing involved. That's just, like, he's, he's a heteromorphic type, okay? So his body's already, like, mutated. Just using that alone 
alone, just the webbing and the six arms alone are useful in and of themselves without even getting the duplication process involved. But, um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, Shoji at this point, he's just, like, looking at Izuku and he's like, man, you shouldn't even be moving right now. You know, you should be really resting. Look how banged up you are. But you know what? You want to save your friends, Izuku, and I can kind of deal with that. I can, I can, I'm, I'm cool with that. All right, let's try to figure out how to quell this raging shadow beast that dwells before us. So they have to try to calm down, uh, uh, Tokoyami, because Dark Shadow is going out of, uh, going out of sorts here. Um, also, during this, um, exchange, they were attacked by a villain, and Shoji literally had one of his arms lopped off. Now, this isn't a big deal, because what Shoji did was that he can take one of his pods... Um, I don't know if they're actually referred to that way, but I'm just going to call them that because they look like... I, th actually, I think they're more like, you know, seed pods, like buds or something on a tree. I think that'd be a better term, but I'm just going to call them pods because that sounds cooler. Um, what Shoji did is he made a replication pod through a replication pod and then created an arm, and that's what got cut off. Now, keep in mind... It still hurts, alright? He can still feel everything that happens there. It's not like if an arm gets cut off, Shoji just doesn't feel it at all. It's actually very similar to Nico Robin's Hanahana no Mi in that respect, because Robin can feel everything that happens to each individual arm. If one of them gets hurt, or if she has to lift up something really heavy, she feels that strain from all of them together. Okay, same deal with Shoji, alright? Um, so when he, you know, extended out a, a replication pod, and created an arm, and that arm got lopped off, it really did feel like he just had his freaking arm lopped off. But he can, like, you know, pull it back in, and his pod was bleeding. It wasn't a shallow cut. It was bleeding pretty bad, but Shoji toughed it out. He's like, yeah, it's okay. It's not like it's gone forever, but... I literally did just have an arm ripped off. That's painful no matter which way you dice it, you know? Um, so yeah, but he was, hey, he actually went along with Izuku's plan because Izuku's plan was literally creating multiple arms and just kind of like luring Dark Shadow down a path doing that. And that was putting it sh um, Shoji at even more risk. Izuku was just kind of like, you know, you know, if you want to go along with my plan, but just to let you know, y you would be pretty much putting yourself entirely at risk here. I mean, I would be putting myself at risk too, because you're carrying me, but it's it's literally putting your life at risk here just for my plan, which might not even work. How many other people would you, you know that would be cool with that? Like, even like your best friend, you know? No, not, now, to be fair, being stuck out in the middle of the woods with a rampaging shadow beast, probably not something that would happen very typically to you and your friends just chilling out on a Saturday night, but uh, imagine if it would for a second here, and one of your friends is like, hey, I have an idea. How about you lure the thing off into the distance? Maybe my plan will work. I'd be like, screw you. Not doing that. We're running and hiding. But, you know, Shoji wants to help out his friends, and he's a very, uh, very honest dude like that, so he's like, you know what, Izuku? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, and that's what they do. Now, luckily, they ran into Todoroki and Bakugo, and they combined their quirks together, and after Tokoyami took out Moonfish, then Tokoyami was able to get uh, under control with the help of Todoroki's fire and Bakugo's explosions. So everything kind of worked out well at the end of the day there for Shoji. He didn't lose any more arms. But, um, yeah, he's, he's pretty tough, pretty, um, pretty durable for, you know, and high pain tolerance, and he's just a pretty uh, true blue guy, you know, always wanting to help out his friends there. Now, something else about Shoji, and I didn't even really get the reference until today, uh... I'm an idiot. I, I really should have seen this because while I'm not a Buddhist, I'm a big fan of anime, clearly, and they make these references. Like, there's a lot of Buddhist references in a lot of different anime, uh, you know, in Japan, you know, Shinto and, and Buddhism being, a, you know, very widespread religions there, uh, if you even really, really consider them religions, because I know some people don't even like to classify, you know, Buddhism and Shinto as religions. Um, and I believe, by the way, they're, they are very similar. I believe Shinto is something more of a cultural thing from Japan, like Shinto originated in Japan itself. I think Buddhism was something that started from China and got brought over. And of course, this was a long ass time ago, so things have changed over the years. But, um, so during the dorm little mini arc contest when they were showing off everybody's dorms, Shoji's was kind of unique because there was nothing in it. Uh, no wacky posters or anything, not even a dresser, just like, here's like a bed and a table. And that's it. That's Shoji's room. And Shoji just, his reaction to that is like, yeah, I've always just uh, been detached from personal belonging, like, like material possessions ever since I was a little kid. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, what the hell is that a reference to? That sound, because that sound, I knew it was like a Buddhism reference, because that sounds like a Buddhist thing. It wasn't until today that I actually realized, oh, because of the canon. No, not this canon, but 
you know, like the canon, I'm not actually going to try to pronounce this word because I can't. I'm not even going to attempt to where to begin there with those uh, syllables. But, you know, this thing, you know, the, the deity in, in Buddhism teachings, um, I think it was more from like the Indian pantheon that has like, you know, a thousand arms or even more than that. This has been used in Naruto. This has been used in Hunter x Hunter with, with Netero's like Nen Beast, you know, like. So this has been used a lot of times in, in anime just beyond those two. Those are the two that come to my mind immediately. There were even Yu-Gi-Oh cards modeled after this thing, so I'm just like, that's the reference. It's like he has he has a lot of arms. He has six arms, but he can create even more. I think it's a reference to that deity from Buddhism teachings. And there's a little uh, little kind of like a sutra. I think that's what it's called from this thing. And it's uh, you know, it, you could um, you could count all the leaves on the trees in the world, and you could count every grain of sand in the universe, but that number would pale in comparison comparison to the power and the blessings that this deity whose name I cannot pronounce possesses. So that's the basic gist there, and I think that's what Horikoshi was kind of going with there, a Buddhism overtone with uh, Shoji's character. Also why he's rather selfless in terms of himself and why he doesn't own a lot. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're going with here. Also, a fan of mine last week, and this is just this just shows how popular Shoji is. Because Shoji, I mean, I was always cool with him. He looked, he had a cool design, he had a really original quirk. I really liked the idea. So, uh, but but I wasn't like way into him. I didn't know if anyone else like really shared it. And uh, a lot of people do. Uh, a fan of mine by the name of Disciple of Sean, uh, last episode during the Ashido video. By the way, quick side note for the Ashido video, because I messed up big time, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I completely glossed over the flashback between Kirishima and Ashido, how they went to middle school together. I completely forgot that chapter. Um, I, I, maybe, I, I think I didn't actually read it when it was released. I read it later, but it didn't really... I was Something was going on where I didn't really remember that chapter too well. But don't worry, because I still have yet to do Kirishima's video, so when I do his which is going to be the much more popular video, I believe. When I do Kirishima's, that is when I will reference the Ashido backstory. At least I get a second chance with that. I apologize. But anyway, last uh, video, of a user by the name of Disciple of Sean uh, sent me this comment, and I just wanted to read this to you because it was pretty cool. Um, all right. For Shoji's video, here is the inspiration for his character. Hope you see this. I did. His name comes from walls have ears, doors have eyes, and then there's like the Japanese like, you know, kanji or, you know, the, the hiragana, katakana that, that mean that. And there's like a little poem here for me to read this. Okay. Walls have ears, doors have eyes, trees have voices, beasts tell lies. Beware the rain, beware the snow, beware the man you think you know. Yeah. I'm not really sure where that was, like, where, where the cited source was, if that was the origin of him. Um, like, Horikoshi saw that poem and decided to roll with it, but if it does, I mean, it makes perfect sense there, right? Now, in terms of what Shoji has done in the actual story, uh, beyond the, the training camp arc, which I just said, uh, which that was a really cool moment for his character, because that was when I really actually focused on him, and like, oh yeah, that guy, let's see what he has to do. And there was some cool scenes with him, but beyond that, um... Well, um, there was that one time during the battle trial where he teamed up with Todoroki, but Todoroki was kind of a, kind of a glory hog in that one. It was kind of cool because Shoji was completely, because Todoroki gave off a very imposing presence, okay? Because this kid is supposed to be like, he was admitted on special recommendation and Todoroki had a very cold kind of demeanor, especially back then. But Shoji was, was like, all right, all right, it's cool. I'm not going to be imposed by this guy. I'll work together with him. Let's just go right in. So they were up against uh, Ojiro and Hagakure. So as soon as they walked into the building, they were playing the heroes. And uh, Shoji goes into the building, and he's like, all right, let's get to this. So he creates the uh, ears and the eyes with his dupla arms, and he puts his ears to the ceiling, into the walls, and he's like, okay... There's, uh, they're both above us, one of them is standing still, the other one is barefoot. Like, he could tell, like, immediately, just based on the sound, like, if they're wearing shoes or if they're not, or how many floors above there are, and he creates his, his mouth, and he's re relaying this information to Todoroki, like, he's actually being smart here, and, like, you know, doing things that, like, a hero would do in this situation, trying to discern the location of these villains, and he's like, all right, so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, one on the top floor, and he's guarding the bomb, and there's another one that's, uh, a floor below, and she's barefoot, so what do you think we're gonna do? What, how, how do you think we're gonna approach this? And Todoroki is just like, you better stand back, I got this. And he's like, alright, and then Todoroki just freezes the entire building, and then Shoji just kind of walks out and just, done. 
okay. You know, like, Shoji's like, Shoji's cool with it. He's just like, oh, that's pretty, pretty cool. All right. We win. I didn't really, I, I tried. I, he's like, he's like someone that like, it, it, it reminds me of like, uh, you ever have like a test in school that you really study for like all night and then you go to take the test and it's super easy or you go to take the test and the teacher's just like, yeah, I was going to give you a test today, but I'm just not feeling it. You know, you're like, he's like, all that work for nothing, you know, like, that that was basically what Shoji's like, oh, I, I prepared for this. I was like, you know, researching, you know, battle scenarios and everything, but okay, whatever, you got it. Um, during the end of semester exam, he teamed up with Hagakure to go up against Snipe, and uh, th there was, yeah, they worked together there to, to take uh, Snipe out. They uh, they passed, um, so, so he had a moment there. Um, but I think that was really more of uh, just Hagakure using her invisibility and the fact that she's buck naked when she does that to kind of, like, embarrass Snipe. I think that's how that, that battle went down, basically. You know, like, I'm an, un I'm an underage naked girl. I don't think she used underage, but she is. And then Snipe's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then they ended up, you know, capturing him. So, okay, not really a lot of uh, spotlight there. Horikoshi, you gotta get on this. Like, I know every single episode of these, whenever I talk about a character that hasn't done much, I'm like, maybe in the next arc they'll do something. Maybe in the next arc they'll do something. Hey, maybe in the next arc they'll do something. No, 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 no. Horikoshi, you should have... You should have had Shoji be way more involved here, like, way before this, you know? Like, it, we shouldn't have had to wait till nearly chapter 200 to get some Shoji action, okay? He, he is a pretty cool character, and I can understand why all the fan base, even without him really doing anything major yet, um, they already kind of accept the fact that, like, Shoji's cool. Shoji's pretty awesome. I didn't really see a lot of negative comments about the kid. I never really saw because there's a lot of people that are like, about Mineta. They'll be like, there's there's the camp that, like, think Mineta is really hilarious, and he's a comic relief character, he's really goofy, he's funny. And then there's other people that just do nothing but shit on Mineta. There's like, Mineta is like a little twerp, his, his quirk sucks, he's such a little perv, you know, he's, you know, like, that. that's the kind of stuff with Mineta. Um, but Shoji, everyone's just like yeah he's he's strong he's got a good quirk uh great personality he's easy to work with i think he's gonna be a great hero um yeah it just sucks that we don't get to see a lot of him but we're cool we can see we can see the potential here we see the potential and and we're waiting for it because the payoff is gonna be big trust me uh, let's see what else. Oh, during the USJ, he uh, kind of selflessly kind of, you know, grabbed Kurogiri so Ida could get away. Remember, Ida was trying to leave the USJ to alert all the other teachers. I always have to do this every time I'm talking about Ida for obvious reasons. Like, I am a robot. Do, 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 do. His video is going to be really fun, too. I need to get a racing helmet for that. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, Kurogiri is about to stop him. And keep in mind, Kurogiri, he has a weird body. His body is basically his warp gate quirk. And um, Meizo just kind of like doesn't even like really try to attack him or anything. He just kind of jumps on him and envelops him. Kind of completely knowing that if he really wanted to, he could have gotten sucked away to a different location just because of that. But at the same time, like, Kurogiri, he's like this gaseous character. So the only thing Meizo could come up with in that situation was like, all right, I got to make sure Ida gets away and that, you know, Kurogiri can't stop him. And he's like this gaseous, you know, kind of body. All I can think to do is just kind of like, you know, completely like grab him, try to cover every square inch of his body with my arms. And that's what he did. And he managed to get out of that okay. But um, it was sort of a dangerous move once again lending to his uh kind of selfless uh, personality there um oh there has to be more than that come on matt there has to be some oh yeah um okay so remember when the big three of ua uh were like being introduced to the class you know you had hotto and you had uh, mirio and you had um uh, sun eater the guy with the food quirk whose name escapes me at the moment uh amajiki that might have been his name anyway hotto who was the girl and she was super curious i remember this was funny she went around the class of 1a and just just out of nowhere just talked about their like uh, most you know distinguishing characteristics like Todoroki what's with that burn on your face Ashido what's with your horns you know and when she gets to Shoji she's like you there what's up with your mask why are you wearing a mask did you catch a cold what's going on and and, and Shoji I mean he's totally once again he's the kind of guy like I'd be just having fun just hanging out with you know like I could sit there like I could imagine playing like you know PS4 or Xbox with Shoji probably would kick my ass because he has six arms you know he's be sitting there like so Shoji, um, yeah, what's up? Um, why do you always wear a mask? Like, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. He's like, oh, um, yeah, no, no, it's fine. Long time ago, I got into an accident, and it's very disfiguring, so I wear a mask. 
oh, okay. Like, he doesn't actually say that, but he does specify to Hado. He's like, oh, well, uh, the mask? Oh, yeah, well, a long time ago, I, and then she cuts him off because she's asking other, you know, people questions. But if it was something like that, if it was, like, a personal thing, Shoji's the kind of guy that would not keep that a secret from his friends. Like, he would just, he would just come out and tell you. He's like, yeah, I was in a motorcycle accident with my parents when I was, like, six. Really messed up my face. Really bad messed up my face. So I wear a mask now. Um, uh, that's it. I'm like, oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's keep playing. Ah, oh, man, you kicked my ass, you know? So, uh, yeah, that, that's the kind of guy Shoji is. I like him. He's, he's just a really cool guy. Um, let's see what else. Come on, there has to be something else, right? Are we done yet? Uh, I don't want to be done. I want to go. You know what? You know what? Okay, let's, um, let's do the same thing we did for Sato. With Sato, I didn't really have a lot to go off either, so I did a, uh, like a fan fiction on the fly. I just created a scenario where, uh, his sugar rush quirk would- Oh! Oh, his name! His hero name! I didn't reference that! Okay. His hero name, are you ready for this? Tentacool! Not Tentacool. No, that would be lame. Tentacool. Okay, yeah, that's cool. At least it's at least it's not like Octo Man or Arm Man or something lame. You know, that's a cool name. You know, the the tentacle superhero. Not getting hentai involved here. He's like, it's like I am the hentai superhero. Yowie Yuri. It, uh, but no, his his hero name is Tentacool, and he seemed pretty proud of that too. And you know what? I'm like, yeah, out of all of the ones like like Tail Man, Sugar Man, like. Those aren't bad na Pinky, like, they're not bad names, but... Except for Pinky, that's kind of a lame name. But you could come up with something better, you know? Come on, Sato. Sugar Man! Just because your quirk involves sugar doesn't mean you just tack man onto the end of that. Come up with, like, uh... Uh... Glusco on! Or, or something cool! Like, C6H12O! Oh, BAM! You know, I don't know! Come up with something cool! I don't know, man. Ojiro, you don't have to, just because you have a tail doesn't mean you have to be tail man. I mean, you could be like, like I said, I, I, oh, I can get to correct that now, too. In the, um, in the, uh, video with Ojiro, I asked, you know, is there a superhero named Whiplash? Because I thought that would be a cool name for Ojiro. Like, BAM! He just got smacked upside the face with my tail. Whiplash! And I completely forgot, Whiplash was the name of, uh, he's a Marvel supervillain, and he was the main villain in, uh, Iron Man 2. He was the Russian dude with the cockatoo. Remember him? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I completely, I love Iron Man 2, and I completely forgot about that character. Um, but yeah, that, that was Whiplash, so I guess there's gonna be a copyright issue there. We're gonna have to go back and workshop that a touch. But you could come up with something better than Tail, man, you know? You know, um, whatever. But anyway, yeah, uh, Tentacool, that's pretty neat. Alright, so, so let's, uh, let's do this. Let's come up with a scenario where, where Shoji finally has a time to shine, okay? So, uh... Yeah, let's uh, let let let's picture this. Okay, so uh, let let's just do this with improv. Okay, except you know I I can't ask the audience to like give me a name and a place because you're not. I mean you can you can comment it if you want, but uh, unless YouTube releases their new time travel feature, un unfortunately I won't be able to see them. You know that, that'll be that's the new way to watch videos coming 2022. You know I'll be able to read the comments from the from the upload that has yet to happen yet from the video I have yet to finish or even edit. But anyway, okay, so Shoji as, uh, he's at an amusement park, okay, yeah, he's, he, he gets all, all of the Class 1A kids decide to go to an amusement park, okay, and they're going, and they're walking around, and they're having fun, and, uh, all the kids at the amusement park see Shoji, and, uh, they're kind of scared of him at first, but he's like, no, it's okay, I'm, I, I, like, and he does something cool with his arms, like he, like, you know, uh, wins the ball toss game or something, and he grabs all the stuffed animals or cotton candy or something with his arms, and he, all the kids, like, oh, he's awesome, so he's He's playing with the kids all day, and he's, like, walking around with them, and their kids are just following him around because they're curious and everything like that, and he's, like, this huge guy, so he's, like, letting them ride on his shoulders. That seems to be the kind of guy Shoji would be, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna hang out with these kids all day, whatever, you know, and make a bunch of eyes and stuff. That might actually creep him out, so don't, don't do that, but, you know, he could, like, um, I don't know, make, make various hands and then, like, tie balloon animals together. I don't know, whatever. He's entertaining the kids, okay? So, um, all the Class 1A kids, they kind of go over one area, and Shoji's just stuck 
stuck with these kids all day. And then, and then a, uh, a villain attacks, but it's like a low-ranking villain, because if a, if a major villain attacked the park, like if a giant dinosaur attacked the park or something, then, you know, all the heroes in the area and all the Class 1A kids would get involved. So let's say, like, a, like a really low-level villain shows out of nowhere, and he's got, like... I don't know, he's got, um, uh, last time I think we did, like, he has an iguana quirk, he's an iguana, alright, whatever, he, he jumps out behind, like, the, the thing, and he's like, hey, I am, uh, I iguana man, I can't, I, okay, I can't come up with something even clever, he's like, I, I'm a, a iguana man, alright, and I'm gonna, like, steal all the money from the cash office, or whatever, like, that's all he does, and, um, Shoji, he's just kinda walking down, playing with all these kids, and this, in this iguana man, he's, he's sneaking by, trying to sneak through and grab the money, and he, he accidentally, he knocks one of the kids down, and he starts crying, or he drops his ice cream cone, and he's like, eh. And then, in one fell swoop, Shoji sees what's going on. He sees this guy about to rob the place. He sends out a dupla arm, grabs this iguana guy, slams him against the wall, pins him, while at the same time, sends out another dupla arm to the local, to the, to the nearest, like, ice cream cart, dumps some change on the guy's, like, hand, and then it's like, thank you for the rocky road, and then stretches his back, all the while he's tying a balloon animal and handing another kid cotton candy and letting another kid ride on his shoulder, so it's basically like, grab the iguana kid, BAM! Here you go, ten cents, thank you, here you go, have one fun kid, and before the kid can even cry, he just gets knocked over and his ice cream phone calls, and before he can even cry, he's like, ah, oh, ice cream, thank you, and he's like, no problem, kid, and then he just, he, he, without the kids even knowing what the hell happened, he just, he's like, turns over the iguana guy to the park security, and they, they call the police, and he gets escorted off the premises, but boom, that's, that would be a cool one, that would be a cool little side chapter for Shoji, I would, I would pay to read that, so, uh, yeah, I came up with that off the, off the cuff, but anyway, I think that's pretty much everything I got from Shoji. I don't think we got any mysterious backstory from him quite yet um, that I'm forgetting, like I forgot with Ashido's. But he's a really, he's a really awesome character. So yeah, we're gonna be seeing more of him soon. All right, so now we are moving on to the favorite part of the segment, the D20. I, I wonder. I want to ask, how many of you? like, watch my videos, but just skip to the end. Like, maybe you didn't care much for Shoji. Like, I don't really care much for Shoji. I'm just gonna click on your video and then skip to the very end, and then here we are at the D20 to select who the next uh, character will be. And it's like, oh, it's another character I don't like. Oh, whatever. I'll just wait until next week. I wonder how many of you actually do that or watch the whole video. By the way, I have a third eye. I don't know if you could tell. Anyway. Uh, Alright, so that's 16 and 11. That's, Haka yeah, that's Hagakure and Shoji. So let's roll it. And uh, let's see what we got here. Now, oh, by the way, keep in mind, though, um, I'm actually going on vacation next week. So there's not going to be an episode next week. Um, I'm going to be bringing my equipment and everything to Florida for vacation. So I'll be able to do videos down there. But these kind of videos, I, I want to be in this environment, especially if it's somebody big. Like if it's Ochako or if it's, if it's Izuku's video, I'm actually putting together an Izuku cosplay right now. I, I, I got to wait until I get back here to do Izuku's. And Izuku's is, I'm thinking about breaking that into two parts because that's going to be huge um but yeah i'm I, so there's not going to be an episode next week is what i'm telling you it'd be the week after and the week after next we'll be talking about roll it 15 and 3 15 is todoroki so yeah and actually really convenient hold on a second uh this is perfect okay so um they recently released um, all of the My Hero Academia, not all of them, but a few more My Hero Academia pop figurines, and we all know I'm a huge pop figurine nut, okay? Well, the Todoroki one, for some reason, I ordered it off Amazon, it, it said it was not, it, there was a delay, or they ran out, or there was some issue with the buyer, it's not gonna get here until, like, you know, November, they stated, so I'm like, what the hell is up with that? So I'm like, man, maybe that's just a really popular one. But, as luck was ha as luck would have it, I was shopping in Barnes & Noble yesterday, and... Bam, 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 bam. So there you go. Todoroki's. I love Todoroki's too because it has, like, look at that. Look at that. The fire and the ice sticking to him. Even his, like, feet are frozen. That's that's awesome. The only downside is even with the, um, even with the, the, the base plate, he still doesn't like to stand up. Like, he, he still kind of is wobbly there. But, um, yeah, I got that. So, Todoroki's video. Now, that one is definitely going to be one that I'm going to have to wait on. So, uh, yeah, that'll be um, the week after next week. So, like, the second week of September, we're going to get into Todoroki. But he's going to be a big one. He's going to be probably another hour-long video. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Teching 101, signing out. Stay cool or stay hot or whichever.
I'm gonna go put all the crap back up on my wall because this is this is weird. <laughs>